Yes, it's a Hi guys. It is just a yuck, gray, rainy day. A rainy Monday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. The rapidly escalating collapse of global industrial civilization here in the self-isolation chamber out here in Garfield, Texas. And I am Sam Mitchell and this is my little flea bitten co-pilot Sancho Panza and just so you know this is Collapse Chronicles not Coronavirus Chronicles uh, oh it is Monday March 30th uh, 2020 by the way so uh, it is uh, as I say, this is Collapse Chronicles, not Coronavirus Chronicles. So the numbers are starting to come in. And I notice that the videos I'm doing on that are not about coronavirus are getting about one-third the views. So Collapse Chronicles is getting whipped by the Coronavirus Chronicles. This is completely to be expected, just as I predicted. Uh, now the, you know, the news about, the non-coronavirus news about the collapse of a planet is, it, it is nowhere on the radar. It has been completely obliterated, uh, even down here in the Doomosphere. So, uh, I'm just going to make this one short and sweet since I realize I'm talking to about 20 people on the planet. I have received three interesting comments uh, recently from, from uh, viewers uh, of, of this uh, of Collapse Chronicles. Uh, and two people have written to me and to share with my listeners in the comments that Arctic ice is at its lowest, that it is at its greatest minimum or lowest extent. Okay, that Arctic ice in March has reached Arctic, not Antarctic, Arctic ice. Both, both people said, have told me that Arctic ice is at a record minimum in, in March. And I'm going, this is sounding weird. And then another alert uh, listener informed me that Arctic, uh, Arctic, you know, up there up north, ice is growing. And uh, there, it, and I guess I misunderstood him. I thought he was saying that it was at its greatest extent ever, but I, I might have misunderstood um, the man. But I know he said it is that Arctic ice extent is larger than uh, it has been uh, recently. So anyway. Uh, Guys, you know, there's some confusion that Collapse Chronicles is a climate change channel. Uh, while I do, or used to, before coronavirus came along, used to chronicle, uh, you know, climate change articles, and it's certainly a part of this channel. Uh, Collapse Chronicles is not a climate change channel. I don't want it to be confused with that, although I am not quite uh, in, the, in the book hermit camp that climate change means nothing on, on this planet. I, I do kind of agree with book hermit that it is not the front and center issue. There are, the way I describe climate change and this whole thing about ice extent at both poles, uh, that there are nine planetary boundaries, okay, nine planetary boundaries that we are coming up against or have already passed several of them. Uh, and climate change is one of the nine. 
And right now, I put climate change probably, if, if this was a horse race, okay, to kill a planet, right now in 2020, I put climate change, I probably agree with Book Hermit, that climate change as of 2020, unless you're a coral reef, unless you are a coral reef, uh, I, I put climate change at the back of the pack that the other eight uh, planetary boundaries are closer to the finish line than climate change. And the, I think the place where I uh, differ from Book Hermit and my other buddy who uh, agrees with him a lot more is that I do think that climate change, the back of the pack horse, as the 21st century unfolds, is going to start overtaking the other horses, the other planetary boundaries. It is a, uh, what, what is the, I'm having a senior moment, a kind, a kind of an accelerator or exacerbator of the other uh, of the other eight planetary boundaries, but in and of itself, climate change is still the ninth horse of the pack, but is rapidly gaining and probably will eventually be it be the lead horse in the pack. The, the question is to use, I guess, a a, a horse racing analogy: are, are are the horses sprinting? to the finish line, which is the collapse of a planet, or is this a more of a long-term how many furloughs? What do they call that in, the, in, in horse racing? So the question is, if this is a sprint to the finish, which it very well could be, climate change is not going to be, by the time climate change gets to the finish line, we will already have crossed the finish line in the sprint. Uh, and climate change as far as humanity, global industrial civilization, and probably uh, most life on this planet will have already been pretty much uh, obliterated through all of the other horses crossing the finish line. Are you following me? But don't worry, eventually climate change, just by some miracle, if the collapse of a planet is not a sprint, but is a much longer term horse race to the finish line, climate change will win, will win. Uh, but, but anyway, guys, there's nine horses in this race. And I don't even think they call overpopulation one of the planetary boundaries. I, you know, why can't I, uh, it's unbelievable that I don't know I, the, these nine planetary boundaries off the top of my head, but I don't even think that overpopulation, just the sheer number of human beings on the planet is even considered a planetary boundary, which is, you, you know, not to have uh, overpopulation as a dis in a discussion of planetary boundaries is like you know having a discussion about McDonald's without mentioning the word hamburgers. So maybe I'm may maybe I'm just having a senior moment, and maybe the number one biggest planet boundary by far. Uh, overpopulation is one of the planetary boundaries, and if it is, we shot past that one uh, when uh, about 1920. Uh, I'm guessing a hundred years ago, we passed that planetary boundary. Uh, but anyway, just just so you understand where where I sit, uh, I myself do not pay much attention to the whole polar ice sheet thing, particularly when I'm talking about ice melt, as I'm talking about the ice floating on top of the water and uh, in the north and the south. It is the ice on land. It is the ice in Greenland up north 
and in Antarctica, it is the land ice that I pay a hell of a lot more attention to. I don't pay, I, I am not about to give any predictions on this mythical blue ocean event. Uh, I, 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 I just don't go there. Uh, it's not that big of a concern to me, even if we have a blue ocean event, it's never been explained to me, to my level of satisfaction, so what? It, it is just one more sign that this planet is collapsing. It is not, the blue ocean event is not, and by my understanding, my reading of the tea leaves, even if we hit this mythical blue ocean event, it, it's not like we're going to have a blue ocean event on September 1st, I don't know, 2022, and on September 2nd, 2022, the human race is going to starve to death and the planet's going to collapse. But anyway, so uh, first I, I want to address these two people uh, who, who have informed me this week that Arctic sea ice is at its lowest point ever in March. Well, n number one, th that, that's completely absurd. There, there, is, there is nothing in that statement that is correct. Uh, Arctic, the stuff up north, this is the northern hemisphere, Arctic sea ice reaches its maximum about this time of year. It reaches its minimum in September. So I'm assuming that it was either a typo or you do not understand the difference between Arctic and Antarctic ice. Uh, so I think maybe you were thinking of Antarctic telling me that the Antarctic sea ice was at it, its lowest point ever in history. And uh, that would be incorrect too. Uh, the, as mentioned in this story, uh, the Antarctic sea ice. Let's talk about, let's get our terms correct guys. This is from the, uh, the Arctic sea ice news and analysis from the National Snow and Ice Data Center. This is what I choose to go to for this. Uh, the National Snow and Ice Data Center. So uh, this is mainly looking at Arctic ice, but they do refer us to the Antarctic, the Antarctic sea ice minimum extent uh, was reached on February 22nd. February 22nd is when the Antarctic uh, ice minimum was reached for this year, uh, which, which is about par for the course uh, since it is the southern hemisphere and in fact it was pretty much just a normal year. In the, down in the Antarctic the sea ice was, uh, was just tracking pretty much the normal. I don't have all of these. You can go on here and get all of the graphs. You can Google the, the national, uh, you know, you can Google this as well as I can, guys, to uh, educate yourselves, but it's pretty much j just a normal year. It was not on any stretch of the, by any stretch of the imagination, a, a record year of Antarctic sea ice. As I say, it, it is the land. It is the land ice that uh, I, um, as a chronicler of the collapse of global industrial civilization and the planet, it is the land ice in Antarctica that is the big Kahuna of them all. Uh, so anyway. So I'm assuming that's what you were talking. You just had Arctic and Antarctic uh, confused. So let's. So what is happening? What happened this week, or when was it? March 5th. On March 5th is the Arctic sea ice. Okay, the stuff we talk about when we're talking about the blue ocean event reached its maximum 
for 2020. There was more sea ice uh, in the Arctic on March 5th uh, than any day of the year, and so now it's starting to go down again. Uh, so where did it rate? Where did it rate? Okay, and their headline for this story is no record breaker maximum, meaning it, well, sure as hell wasn't the most ever. What they're talking about, it was not the record minimum maximum. It was in fact the 11th. It came in number 11. All right, take it away and explain to this to us National Snow and Ice Data Center. All right, no record breaker maximum. Arctic sea ice appears to have reached its annual maximum extent on March 5th. The 2020 maximum sea ice extent is the lowest in the 42-year satellite record, but it is the highest since the year 2013. Uh, so, I guess that's what my friend was referring to when he said that Arctic sea ice is growing. Uh, this is the highest, while it's the 11th lowest in 42 years, it is the highest. Uh, and so over the past few years, it is actually higher. Uh, so that, I think, is the confusion. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Overview of conditions. Okay, so what was the maximum extent? It was 5.81 million square miles, otherwise known as 15 million square kilometers, which is the 11th lowest maximum in the 42-year satellite record. This year's maximum extent is 228,000 square miles, otherwise known as 590,000 square kilometers, below the 1981 to 2010 average maximum of six million square miles. Okay. Uh, but the, another way of looking at that, so that is, you know, over the, the 1981 to 2010 average, we are down 228,000 square miles. However, uh, the, we are too, so understand this, this is, I, I know this is really difficult, I had to read this sentence several times, compared to the 1981 to 2010 average, the uh, 2020 is down 228,000 square miles, coming in at number 11, however, if you compare it to the lowest maximum ever set on March 7th, 2017, we are 247,000 uh, uh, 247, square miles above the lowest maximum uh, from three years ago. So the, the, the ice, the ice, uh, the Arctic sea ice has actually gained 247,000 square miles at its maximum in the past three years. Uh, so it is on the maximum is on an upward trend, although comparing it, you know, to the 1981 to 2010 average, it's still on a lower trend. Uh, prior to this year, the four lowest maximum extents occurred 
from 2015 to 2018. And the date of the maximum this year, you know, March 5th, was seven days before the 1981 to 2010 median date of March 12th, uh, which is another way of saying that the melting, uh, you know, heading into September's uh, minimum is beginning a week earlier than the than the long time average of March 12th. Uh, okay, then of course the question is. Uh, the question is, is the maximum extent a predictor of the minimum extent? And as they explain here, you cannot use the maximum extent in March to predict the minimum extent in September. You cannot scientifically use it as a data point. Uh, often there is a debate as to whether the maximum extent in March is predictive of the minimum extent in September. Both, both the maximum and the minimum have statistically significant downward trends so it is expected that both will tend to have low extents relative to the long-term averages. However, the specific maximum extent in any given year does not correlate to the specific minimum extent, which we'll see in about six months. Uh, when the trend is removed from both time series or detrended, there is essentially no relation between the two. Uh, in other words, a relatively high maximum is not, rel is not necessarily followed by a relatively high minimum. Uh, Anyway, uh, and, they, and they give examples of this year by year showing that anybody, if you hear anybody claiming that, uh, that this means we're going to have the 11th uh, lowest, you know what I'm saying, throw it out the, throw it out the window. They do not know what they're talking about. The reason why the seasonal maximum extent, maximum extent, meaning the March extent and the September minimum extent are not correlated is largely because summer weather conditions strongly shape the September minimum. In uh, the summer of 2020, uh, cranking up here, as they say. So the ice is already starting to creep downward, and of course, the summer of 2020 uh, it is going to be, uh, you know, the deciding factor on whether we're going to hit this mythical blue ocean event in 20 or 2020 or not. Uh, my prediction is no, we are not. Uh, so I guess, uh, I, you know, I, I can keep making that prediction that no, we are not, and, and, and I can only be wrong once. So I've been making it, how many years have I been? I think this is the fourth or fifth year I have predicted we are not going to have a blue ocean event, and I've been right every year, one year. I'm going to be wrong. Uh, we are going to have the, the Blue Ocean event, and at that point, we will, I guess, we will answer the much bigger question, so what? But that will be a different Collapse Chronicle for a different time. But I have to wrap up this Collapse Chronicles. 
uh, and go back over to the much more anticipated which story out of the 20 million that I choose for the coronavirus chronicles but you'll have to tune in to the coronavirus chronicles to find out and then I uh, have to go figure out how to get these fleas off my little dog. Uh, but if you enjoyed what uh, this clara amplification and clarification, uh, please thumb up this video. And while you're over here at Collapse Chronicles, please subscribe and uh, get out there the best you can from your social isolation chamber and enjoy it while you still can because things have turned weird on the planet. Bye guys.